Hello and welcome. It is now week eight, uh, not only of the quarantine, but uh, cooking with Nina as well. <laughs> so welcome back. We got some people jumping on. Uh, hello. Happy Mother's Day. Secret Burger, Jolene, thank you for, for creating this platform. We are streaming for the last eight weeks through uh, Secret Burger and selling tickets. And thank you again to these amazing guys from Event Capture. They're the ones. And let's see. Hey, David. Nice to see you guys all again. Awesome, everybody's, everybody's trickling in. Samantha Gemini finally got her glass. I still have a couple glasses here, but I don't know who they belong to. So if you haven't picked up your glass yet, then they're ready for you. Awesome, and happy, happy Mother's Day. Today's menu is themed around um, all the beautiful women out there, all the mothers. Honestly, I, I commend you. It's not an easy job. Uh, if you ask my mother, <laughs> she's been with me for, for, for the last 32 years, now going on to 33 years. And for the last eight weeks, you know, watching all the different emotional roller coasters I go through and experiencing all these new different personalities and emotions that she hasn't been exposed to. So she's the hero in the family. Um, so we'll wait for everybody to jump on. Today we're making luchnik. Luchnik comes from the word luk. And so it's a, an onion pie with potatoes. So it's luchnik sus kartofi. Kartofi means potatoes. But it has all these amazing fresh herbs that I include in the kit. You got fresh dill. Uh, you can use leeks. I put green onions, some mint, uh, chopped onion, the garden savory, chubritsa. You can substitute oregano, but in your kit you have chubritsa, which we import from Bulgaria. I sent out last night, you can put some red pepper in as well. That adds a nice flavor and some salt and pepper. And we have our dough. I let the dough sit out a little bit so it warms up, so it makes it easier to stretch. And we will see how that goes because from the Kachapuri video, I had a little bit of trouble with it. So I really love the Shepska salad. It's one of my mom's favorite uh, salads as well. And we drink that with Rakia. So Rakia is a famous Bulgarian great brandy. This brand is amazing. All of your kits that got the Rakia, you got the barrel aged Burgas 63. And it's really smooth, really aromatic, and very delicious. A couple people said something about Slivovitz. So Slivovitz is also a type of Rakia. Slivovitz meaning Sliva, which means plum. So this is Grozdova Rakia, which means grape. So it's a grape brandy. And Bulgaria is really famous for its fruit distillates. As we mentioned before, we have like four or five different types of Bulgarian brandies that we serve here on the menu. And it's a little bit dangerous. So brandy is definitely one of those things that we eat with the meal, starting from the beginning, continuing on. And I don't suggest shooting it if you want to do shots of it then go ahead, but it's going to be a very difficult rest of the day for you. Hey, Elaine, welcome back. We got people jumping on. So, I know also in news, a lot of restaurants uh, or, or a lot of restaurants are able to open. Uh, here at Forte, we are going to take our time with opening because we do want to welcome everybody back in the best and the safest way possible. So we are going to be doing it in different stages. And the first stage will probably begin maybe in about a week and a half. Don't quote me on that. You guys will be the first to know. And we'll be opening up our dining area. And that's what we've been doing for the last week is moving chairs and tables around trying to figure out how this is going to happen and reconfigure the whole space to be able to welcome people in comfortably 
because Forte just is that kind of place. We want everyone to feel happy and welcome and fill the room with love and, and all those good things and be safe. So we're going to start doing that in the next week and a half. And the bar area will be the last part of the bit to open. Awesome, and Elaine, so I'm so happy to see that people are still making the recipes from the last classes. This is another recipe that's amazing because you can modify the dish however you want. You can make it with meat as well. But the one that we're making today, it's vegetarian, it's vegan, has all the good stuff. Oh, and the walnuts too. Walnuts are a great addition. Okay, so. You have your whole potato. This is about a medium-sized potato. We're going to grate that. The measurements for the onion, we have two chopped uh, small medium-sized onions, uh, a bunch of dill, green onion. OK. Should we start with the Shapska salad first, or should we start with the Luchnik? You know what? We're going to start with the Luchnik. We're going to start first, because this is going to take some time Oh, and preheat your oven to 425 degrees. That seems to be a consistent for a lot of our different dishes. Um, this is going to take probably about 35, 40 minutes to bake completely, and maybe about 10 minutes to caramelize all the good stuff. So I'm going to start with that. We're going to put un or oil inside of our pan. We're going to get that nice and heated. So the whole point of this is to have the most onion. And we're going to caramelize our onions, and then we're going to add all of our fresh herbs at the end. So the main ones are the onion and then the herbs at the end. So we're going to start first. I'm going to chop all my ingredients. I like to cut the green onion kind of at a long bias. Let me know if anybody has any questions, if you're jumping in. And I appreciate you taking the time. I know it's, we're moving on to a different platform. So it's, it's taking a little bit extra for you guys to, to get on, but I really, really appreciate it. This has been so, so much fun. And I really want to continue doing these classes. And we'll see how we're going to keep doing that. And eventually, even the possibility of welcoming you in here and having more of like a private class, or even if you want to do it with uh, friends from work or new friends, we'll be here. The studio is going to keep running. And it'll be really exciting once this is over to be able to you know, create actual events here and do that through Secret Burger as well and introducing you guys to new dishes. We are gonna open with a slightly modified menu um, of all of the Forte favorites and then concentrate on doing different daily specials as we evolve and grow. And also opening a new deli sort of component to it with a wine shop and tasting room. So you'll have a lot of different ways to experience all the new things that we're doing. So we're gonna take also our mint the mint is going to add really nice flavor to everything. And chop it up. I chop the stems up in there as well. A lot of the flavor of the different herbs lives inside of the stems. Pull that together. And then our dill. And I love dill. You notice a lot of some of the different dishes that we do incorporate dill. The smells are amazing and you'll see once we start caramelizing the onions and incorporate everything together, it's going to smell delicious. And when the pie cooks, even more so. And the great thing about this pie, I mean you can, I put, I put the dough in there so that when you stretch it out, it's going to have a nice thin layer on both sides. So that's why this dish is really nice for the summertime. You're not getting all that bread. You're getting all the flavors of the ingredients. And, 
and just a nice decadent crust. Okay, so we have those. And then I'll take my walnuts. I have about a handful of walnuts, and I like to chop them up, whatever your preference is, but we need to have them into small, smaller pieces. have all of our things here in place this out of the way. and then I think we have our oil ready so we're going to add our onion into there And just so you know, I can do the flip with the skillet, but I'm just going to not do that right now. <laughs> okay. Everybody good? Everybody got that going on? Perfect. So we want to put this on high heat. We want the onions to get really caramelized and brown and release all the flavors. And then once that gets going, we're gonna, the next thing we're going to do is add our green onion and just cook that for a little bit. But in the meantime, I'm actually going to take my potato and I'm going to grate it. So you can do this several different ways. This is how We've done it a lot of the times. This is how um, my, my great-grandmother did for my dad. You know, with my mom, we do it different ways. Some, you can chop the potatoes up so they're bigger pieces. But this will have a nice distribution of the different ingredients because they're all kind of the same size. And it'll make the pie really nice. So our potatoes. And you can already start smelling the onions getting brown. Yes, sizzling. Oh, and Martin, awesome. Martin, you're amazing. So Martin's in New York, and yesterday he ordered delivery for his mother who lives here in Las Vegas in Summerlin. So you're, you're a good son. Great job. And thank you for, for tuning in. Great. So this is going to take a little time. I think while this is going, uh, we can start doing some of the, the Shopska salad. I don't know, Mama? Yes. <laughs> so we have a very special guest today. <laughs> it's my It's my... Mama Mimi, and she's my favorite person in the world. And she's gonna be making the Shopska salad because also for the last, uh, for the last eight weeks and going further than that, uh, all we eat at home are these fresh, amazing salads that she makes. Happy Mother's Day. You don't, does she have to talk into the microphone? So they can no. hear me. <laughs> you don't have to talk into the microphone. Okay. It's right there. Okay. Happy Mother's Day. So I'm going to move this here. I'll move this to the side. Why are you putting your board here? Oh, you know what? I'm going to put you... We need another cutting board. Can you get another cutting board? <laughs> See, again, it's not, it's not the, the cooking with Nina uh, weekly activity if we don't forget something. So, and the phone, too. So... So yes, and she loves you too. She's bringing, she's bringing over a cutting board right now. 
So Shapska salad is a very famous Bulgarian salad. You can make it a couple different ways. Here at the restaurant, we slice the tomatoes thin and the cucumbers thin. The one that we're going to make today, you actually chop it so they're bigger chunks of the ingredients. They can't hear me. They can hear you. Okay. Say hello. <laughs> okay. So here you go. I'll grab the bowl. Okay. So while she's doing that, I'm going to start pouring the necessary other ingredients. Again, the rakia. Should I peel the tomato? Because I like to peel them. But so my mom likes to peel the tomato. Yeah, peel it. Hmm? Peel it. Peel it. So you can peel the tomato. The one, the tomatoes that we provide, they're all uh, organic field tomatoes. They definitely have a very special flavor to them. They actually taste like a tomato. And I think that's great because a it's lot optional. of these, it's optional. So you don't have to peel the tomato, but it definitely makes it more pleasant. And a lot of the thing in, in Bulgarian cuisine is uh, the ingredients should stand out on their own. So the better ingredients you use, the more flavorful the different dishes would be. Because all we're doing is um, dressing this with olive oil and salt. Let me get this one. So. Yes. So you see she's just going to cut it into thick the slices part. and then into chunks. And Gemini says she loves you. <laughs> I love you too. So she likes to peel the cucumbers as well. I peel everything. She peels everything. <laughs> and the cucumbers we use here at the restaurant, they're Persian cucumbers. They're shorter, but they also have a lot of flavor and make this dish really great. Cheers. And then in the kit you have about half of a roasted pepper. You can, do, you can do red pepper, you can do green pepper, you can do a bunch of different colors and make the dish really colorful. I mean, I can't see it's okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> parsley? Olive oil. Parsley? Or are you gonna put parsley at the end? No. Do you, the end. you wanna put it at the end? Well. Do you want this knife? Oh. Do you want to put it here? Yeah. We'll put it here. Or yeah. yeah, wherever you want. So we'll put some inside to mix. I'm gonna put a little green onion. I forgot some green onion. This one, huh? Milk some. Five. Olive oil. Olive oil. Salt. Oh, the cheese is pretty salty, son. Yeah, so we don't put a lot of salt into it because the cheese is salty. We use kosher salt here at the restaurant to flavor everything. You wanna mix it? Hands. Yeah, you can mix it with the hand, your hands or with the uh, with the spoon as well. Jolene right. says Happy Mother's Day. Thank you, Jolene. Here, we'll switch this out. Thank you. I'm 
ends right here. And then we're just gonna grate the cheese on top. And this is what's gonna add all that amazing flavor. Hey, Martin. Hello, Martin. Hello, Canada. Thank you for tuning in every weekend with us. Beautiful. Boom. <laughs> and here's the Kia. Yes. Any questions? Any questions for Mimi? Ask Mimi, ask Mimi anything. This is your chance because it's not often that we get to get her on or at all on camera. So any questions you have for Mimi, like how amazing is it that I'm her daughter? Um, uh, how does she how does she spend all day with me and just like is absolutely so happy all the time with me around? Um, how how did I become the best daughter that she's ever had and how I was enough that she didn't need to have more children? Um, how Any much questions? she loves me. <laughs> <laughs> so David, this is, uh, this is Bulgarian sheep's milk feta cheese. And I like to compare this to, it's right between Greek and French uh, feta cheese. Okay, we're getting, the onions are starting to cook. Cheers, Mama. Cheers. Cheers. Don't worry, she's coming back. This wasn't the the last time. All right, we're gonna turn the I'm gonna turn the heat down a little bit. Here's my little spoon. Back. And our onions are now nice and golden brown. I'm gonna take this one. Yeah. All right. So. And I think we are good. So I'm gonna lower the heat down and then I'm gonna put the, I'm gonna add my potatoes into the mix as well as the green onion. I'm gonna ditch the little spoon, because I like the big spoon. Get everything mixed in together. How is everybody? Oh, Elaine, it, Elaine is asking where you got your cool shirt. Come over here. I'll get you one. In all sizes. Elaine, she'll, she'll get you one. If you're interested, we got you. And um, Reeve said that we look identical, so. Who said that? Reeve. Oh. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, so we're going to cook that. And then at the end, we're going to add all of our other ingredients. Got our walnuts, our mint, and we add these at the end because we want the flavor to still stay. If we cook it all together, it's not gonna, yes, turn it off. Great. And then I'm gonna put my garden savory. This is about maybe a tablespoon of garden savory. Uh, like a teaspoon of crushed black pepper and a little kosher salt. I'm just gonna add some of that. And then I'm gonna add the red pepper. You don't have to, this is optional, but we like it. Mix all of that. Together, and you can you can see we're starting to 
get our filling for the pie. And again, we're making luchnik and shapska salad. And these two go hand in hand. And we have a lot of filling here. Okay. Put that to the side. And now we're going to stretch out our dough. And I have my pan here. I oiled it so that the pie doesn't stick to the bottom of it. I'm going to put a little bit of flour on my table. You got a question? Oh, Martin. Radusveta from Canada. You're amazing. So if you use if you use the leeks, I would suggest putting them what right as when they're starting to to brown, you put the leeks in as well. So that they soften up. And the white parts and the green parts, you can put both in. So the, the mint and the dill and uh, the, the garden savory, we put that at the end. So we want the onions to get caramelized, the potato to go in, the green onion or the leeks, uh, and all of those kind of work together. And then right when we take it off the heat, we add the dill and the mint because we still want to keep those flavors intact and not cook into the dish because we are also going to be baking it and as well as the garden savory and again optional you can put the red pepper some salt and some pepper so we're going to start with our dough I had it sitting out a little bit so it's easier to work with and we're going to stretch this out and we have two two balls of dough so one is for the bottom, the base of the pie, and then the other one is for the top. And we're going to actually roll all the edges together similar to how we did the vreniki and the kachapuri. You know what else? I forgot my fork. Fork and little, little water. And little what? Water. So at the end, when we, after we bake the pie, we're going to poke the tops of it too so that it doesn't expand too much during baking. And I hope everybody has this going. So you see we're stretching it out really, really thin. And you can make this also in a, like in a baking dish, so it, so it sits more like a pie as well. But we're gonna do it this easy way. Thank you. Just a little bit more. because we got a lot of filling. And even if you have extra filling, this filling as well, you can, you can do the same thing as how we did with the banitsa and make filling for banitsa, right? Right, Mama? Mm -hmm. You can make banitsa like this too, right? Yeah. With this filling. But if you guys already have this cooked, go ahead and make a taste of it. Add more salt and pepper if you, if you feel. We got our. Well, come, come and come and come, come here, hello, mama. So, what were you saying? You can make it with meat. You can make it with anything, but make sure everything is cooked before. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you have to cook the meat. It's not going to be cooking with everything during the baking process. So you can add pork, can add beef, rice to that. Rice, you can add rice as well. Stretch the top part of it out. All right. Mm. 
he's so talented. <laughs> I think that's the the best and worst thing about my mom is she is she always tells me that everything is possible and everything I want to do will happen and sometimes I feel like I, I'm I'm way too confident with most things. It's but a good thing. It's a good thing, right? <laughs> and my mom taught me how to stretch the dough. <laughs> I know one time, maybe, maybe I can do the, the, the pizza uh -huh. flipping. I can't do it. I can't do it. Takes practice. But I think if, if somebody would like to teach me this technique, eventually I'll learn it. See, okay, not too bad. I don't want to push my luck too far. But I think we're getting close. So the, the dough that was in the kit, one, one of the dough balls was a little bit less in grams than the other one. The one with the lesser amount, that's going to be the top. So now I think, I think we're ready to, and whoever got the, the, the Bulgarian serving dish, we're going to be plating that on here as well. So again, we have our potato in here is grated. You can do chunks of potato as well. well you will see when all of this comes. Put our other sheet of dough on the top. So again, there's a couple different things that you can do. You can fold this, you know, all the way around so that it comes into the pie. Another way is how, again, like how we did the vreniki, and you just start pinching and rolling. All the way on the perimeter. Perimeter, is that right? Mm -hmm. Perimeter. <laughs> the perimeter. You can also do a egg wash too, if you get some uh, egg yolk and brush it on top and that'll make a nice shine to it. Makes it shiny. Makes it shiny. Or just water. Or, just butter. or water or butter. You can also do yogurt. And if you guys if you guys ever need to get the I got most of the fresh herbs from the Mediterranean market. He always has really amazing, if you'll see in your kit, like the mint is amazing, the dill is super fresh, the green onions, everything. So I went over there especially and shopped for these different ingredients. Elaine, Mark is cooking. Perfect. I think that's the perfect balance. He cooks and you drink and everyone's, everyone's happy. Great job, Elaine. Cheers, Mama. The pork. Where's your drink? Okay. Okay, so you can see we have our beautiful pie, and then how it should do it like a couple like this. Yep. So I'm just going to do a couple pokes. So when it bakes, it doesn't it doesn't puff up and and create like a weird crust on top. Would you say? Oh yeah, and you can do that one as well. just to keep everything in place, right? Yeah. And then you can either brush some water on top. I'm just going to put a little water. 
and then we are we are going to bake our pie. And again, we're going to bake this for about 30 minutes on 425 degrees. Awesome. So who else is who else is popping theirs in the oven right now? Yep, and just put it out. Bake about 30 minutes. We want all the ingredients coming together. Mama, we're not done with you yet. Mama, come over here. <laughs> now she's being shy. <laughs> We got a quarter of a bottle of rakia left. We got 30 minutes. And we got a Shupska salad. Ha ha. <laughs> all right, Gemini. Rakia all day. OK. Well, while everybody gets their questions together, because we have Mimi during this, this next 30 minutes. <laughs> I have some I have some questions for you. So what what is the what is the best part about being my mother? What is the best part about being a mother? Being your mother. Okay. <laughs> That's the best part. Because you're the most beautiful. Oh my god, okay, no. <laughs> this is not gonna this is not gonna go. Oh awesome. How did it feel when you found out that you were going to be a mother? I don't remember. That was like a long time ago. It was a long time ago. Yeah, how long ago? It was 32 years ago. What's today? Today's... Today's Sunday. Today's Sunday. Uh, yeah, that was like 33 years ago. And I was born on a Sunday, right? Yeah. Yeah. June 7th, I think. <laughs> she, doesn't have, she doesn't remember. <laughs> and when, yeah, so, the so when you... Of my life. Well, actually, I didn't have life before. My life started that day. What was the day? June seventh. June seventh. That's when your life started. <laughs> so how did how did all? So you found out that you were having a girl, and then what happened? I got everything in pink, all the clothes, and actually, your father did. Uh huh. He bought everything for a girl. Was he excited that it was going to be a girl? Yeah. Yeah. He likes girls. Well, no. little girls. Babies. That doesn't sound right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he always wanted to have a girl. Uh, my father likes the idea of having a little girl, which was me, and he liked Yeah, he was that. really happy. <laughs> oh, yes. Well, Martin, you, you, we, have, we have a lot of Burgas 63 Rakia here for you the next time you visit. I can't wait for us to open and get a lot of our out-of-town guests back here as well. Oh, Dr. O'Reiner, hi. That's amazing, hello. Say hello to everybody. What is your favorite kind of rakia? What is your mem first memory of rakia? Oh. When did you start drinking rakia? I was around seven. When did you become an alcoholic? Around seven. <laughs> around seven. <laughs> Because my, my grandfather used to make rakia. Uh -huh. And I was always in this environment, like picking up the plums, and they were making rakia. Were they making in the, like in the backyard? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yes. a, lot of, a lot of places in Bulgaria, people have stills. They build stills in their backyard, and they're actually making rakia. So it was somebody else's backyard. It's somebody else's backyard, yeah. yes. Not ours. Yes. But uh, you go in and you have the big vats of fruit that's fermenting and an actual like mini distillery well, happening. They make and some of everything, like yeah. the plums, 
grapes, pears. Quince. Yeah. I think quince is one of my favorite mm -hmm. rakias. But I remember when, when we when we go to Bulgaria and we go see uh, my grandmother, your 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 mother, she always brings out the, the rakia from the fridge that's been aged for like 40, 40 years. <laughs> 40, 50 years and when you pour it it's like syrup. And it's so delicious. And I actually never really got used to rakia until the quarantine started happening because there was a thing. Uh, people were making jokes and memes that rakia cured the virus or was a all part virus. of it. <laughs> rakia cures all viruses. <laughs> and actually growing up, if I ever got a cold or, or you get a fever, it was, it was the worst time ever, not because you have the cold, but because what my parents would do to cure that. So you take the rakia and they put it everywhere and you put like four or five layers of t-shirts, sweater, blanket up to your nose. And you're ready to go the next day. And you, and, you, <laughs> and you sweat it out. And they would come in and check on me every like 30 minutes because they know, they know I would like uncover myself because it's, it's freaking hot. But honestly, the next day you actually feel a lot better. We got some of this. Elaine? Oh, Elaine's saying, so uh, they've been here for four years now. And they came out for the Wild Wild West adventure. Uh, the question is, what, what, what brought you and my dad out to Vegas? Oh, that's another show. <laughs> we don't have time. <laughs> well, give it's us, a long story. Give us, give us the cliff notes, because both my parents were very young. My mom, how, you were 20 years old, 19, 20? 19, 20. And my dad was like 24, 25 years old. So what was, what, give us the, the short romantic version uh. of, <laughs> of the story. She doesn't remember. I think so, sometimes my mom, my mom says that, that, that it's just, it was just a joke. Like it was just for fun. That I don't think that they ever planned like on having roots here, right? It was just. It was just like vacation. It's yeah. a long vacation, 30 years. 30 year vacation. I'm planning to stay. Yeah. But the, it, you know, it took a lot for them to come out here and, um, well, you went, for, how did you guys, how did you guys get here? You went, you had to go through, oh, yeah, it's an interesting story. different countries, yeah. Yeah, it's they, like, we immigrants. Yeah, so <laughs> they, so they immigrated, they went through, right, through Serbia first, right? Serbia, then Italy. They lived in Italy for a little while and worked at Italian restaurants and then, and then went to Chicago. Uh, we lived in Chicago for a little over a year, right? A little over a year and a half. And then the way that I remember the story is that it was a choice between Vegas and Florida, right? Yeah. And why didn't Somewhere you choose Florida? Warm. Yes. <laughs> but why wasn't it Florida? Because it was humid? Yeah, we just, yeah, we just tried Vegas and we're still here. Yeah. And Vegas is such Love an it. amazing spot. Yeah. Yes, and we did punk guy on, uh, on Triple D. Homemade apricot rakia. I like apricot yes. rakia too. That's another one. Wonderful. And yeah, Vegas does get you. I, I know for myself growing up here, I went to all, all brand new schools. I went to UNLV. Uh, even before I was graduating high school, you know, I talked to my parents and they said, you go wherever you want, but why? And, I'm, and I couldn't answer the question why. I really like Vegas so much and this town has provided amazing opportunities for us to grow here and to, to be in this, this industry that we're in and we've met some amazing people along the way and it feels like a small town even though it's a very big and prominent place um, filled with great people so we're very happy about that. But after quarantine, where do you want me to take you? I think we're going to Turkey. To Turkey? Yeah. Okay. I've never been to Turkey. Okay. Yeah. Well, we do watch, um, can I tell them about 
what you do in the evenings? Oh, that's, that's something recently, not too often. So recently we got um, Bulgarian television and it's on Apple TV and you can stream uh, all the different networks and channels and shows and there's also a bunch of uh, Turkish series. Oh, they have them on Netflix. They, yeah, they actually do. Netflix now has a whole thing of like Turkish shows and I think they added them because my mom stopped watching Netflix so they were trying to lure her back in. <laughs> To watch it. It's so interesting. It's a lot of drama there. <clears throat> it's so much drama. Like everybody, and 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 the more you start watching it, everybody's story comes. And just when you think it people people are going to be happy <laughs> and they they figure it out, like someone's cousin from a family that died, like is all of a sudden alive and he comes back. <laughs> they never die. <laughs> they never smile. They never. But but it's so entertaining to watch. Even I I really enjoy it. There's a lot of family and drama and all those things. Kind of awesome. Familiar. 20 years now. Great, yeah, we've been here for, for 30 years. And I think Vegas is such a good home base and we're so close to a lot of different nature and even when the airport starts working again, it's, it's an airport that flies direct to so many other different destinations, so it's a great, great place to be. How far along are we with the, do we know? Okay, We're going to go check, how many? It's been only 10 minutes. It's only 10 minutes? Mm -hmm. So we're going to go check on it. Yeah, BG time, that's the one for, for a lot of the, a lot of the different series. So Elaine's saying, Mark has said it really is one of the best tomatoes he had. Yeah. So the Mediterranean market I'm referring to, it's on, um, if you're in Vegas, it's on Durango and Sahara. And they have amazing produce there and the cucumbers as well. And also there's another store on Jones and Spring Mountain that you can get those. And I get shipments a couple times a week. And we usually go there to, to get our tomatoes. They're a little bit more expensive, but I think it's worth it because you're getting a great product. And I've noticed like, I wanna go and buy heirloom tomatoes because you'd think that those would be really flavorful. Sometimes it's really hard because they have the shape of, of the heirloom, but they're still pretty green on the inside. So don't have all the flavors. How many more minutes? I think we're at five more minutes, so we'll be able to, to get our pie. But everybody's oven is different. Yeah, everybody's oven's a little bit, yeah. So Reeve said her, hers is browning, so I think we're on the same, on the same page. Can you bring one of the plates? Hmm? The plates? What plates? The Bulgarian plates? I'll show you the, the different plates and ceramics we have. So the story of the Forte logo. Uh, I really love art. I love painting. I've always been into it. It's something that when I do it, like most people for food or whatever they do, it's very cathartic. And I grew up doing, doing different paintings and things like that. And every year for my parents' anniversary, I would make them a gift. And I even try to do it now going forward where I paint them a card or a portrait or something. And the Forte Bowl actually started with, uh, as a gift for, for my parents for one of their anniversaries, I think back, it was probably right before I graduated high school. And when, when Forte was opening up, the name Forte comes from like symbolizing strength or a specialty in something. And because we had the Spanish element, we wanted to choose the bull as the symbol because that symbolizes strength and and, and, you know, passion and positivity and loud and whatever else we're doing. So I started painting other bulls as well. But the one that stuck out to everybody was the five-legged bull. And it has five legs because it's fast and it's strong and it will get you to where you need to be a lot faster. And that just kind of stuck. So even when Diners, Drive-Ins and Dives came and they filmed, 
the producers and the whole the whole crew were like that needs to be that needs to be your logo. I had another bull back in the day, but that's what kind of remained. So I hope that answers your question. And we have this is another dish that was in the kit. They're all handmade and you can see just like a bunch of the other ones, I'm introducing them slowly and we'll have a bunch of these available. I just ordered a brand new shipment, um, different colors and patterns. I think they're so nice and great for a gift and really just highlight all the different dishes that we do. And I think, yeah, the pie. The pie's coming out. Yeah, I think it's, yeah, it's perfect. Oh. So you can see. And you'll see, I mean, even if you wanted to put, where's my olive oil? Anyway, yeah. you can put just a little bit of oil on the top or butter. butter. And like I told you before, I've, I've become desensitized to a lot of things, so. A lot of people put egg. Like egg. You can put the egg, the egg yolk while it's baking to create this like shiny sort of appearance. And then we'll transfer it over. Okay. I'm gonna take, take this one. Thank you, Reeve. And then this is our this is our luchnik. It's perfect. I like to also eat this with uh, if you have yogurt on the side or sour cream or creme fraiche. I like the way that the 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 dairy kind of balances out the the richness. So that's a good option. Can we have oh mama? Let's bring another. Mommy, if you want, we can bring, do you want to cut this here? We'll cut it on the, on the table. And you can do it just like, you can see. Mm. And it's so crispy, you have the dough in there, but you have all the different flavors of, of the onion and the dill. And this is such a great dish cold too, so you can even enjoy this the next day if you want to heat it up or if you just want to eat it as a, as a snack. And I really hope you guys enjoy this one. Super hot, yeah, it smells great. All right, so we have our luchnik. We have, I mean, look at this. You see everything in there, just the thin, thin crust, and it's gonna be crispy and super delicious. Do you wanna have the first bite? <laughs> It's still hot. It's still hot. Okay. Well, I'm going to pour a little bit of this. Talk about the dough. So the dough, it's old school. It's just yeast, water, flour, and salt. That's it. And I can send you guys the exact recipe, but we, we mix all those ingredients together and then we let the dough sit and then we form it into the small bowl, into the small uh, balls. And I can't wait. So uh, as we're getting everything ready to open, we are gonna, everybody who's been a part of these uh, secret burgers and the cook-alongs every week, you guys will get an email 
Uh, we want to start opening it up little by little and invite you guys to be uh, some of the first that come to, to attend and, all, and also all of our great customers that have been with us throughout the 10 years. It's been, I mean, for, for all of us a very, very different time. It feels like we're opening a brand new restaurant and it's crazy how something like this has happened and it doesn't matter if you've been in business for one year, for, for 10 years, for whatever it is, it's, it's affecting all of us. So we just want to start fresh and be able to invite you guys in in a positive way. The new normal? Yeah, and Elaine, uh, yeah, you can, use, you can use pizza dough too. So we use, uh, another thing, we use high gluten flour. I'm going to try it. It's still hot. It's really hot. But it's very good. And I didn't put a lot of salt in here, so it's up to you. Or if you, even if you have it with some of the cheese or with yogurt or the creme fraiche or sour cream, it's going to add another flavor. And I really enjoy it that way. So thank you guys very much for joining us every Saturday. Uh, we're going to be, we're going to keep continuing to do these. Whoever wants to join in, welcome. We're going to add some other fresh dishes to the mix because now it's really, really hot. And we'll be announcing that. And we're going to keep these other events like Wine Wednesday, Spanish Saturdays going, the Ropa Deli Thursdays because those have been very popular. And even as we open, those will be a part of our regular menu. Because I think that's, I mean, it's been awesome. You get a bottle of wine, a charcuterie and cheese plate for 30 bucks. I think that's a great deal. And eventually we'll start opening it up so we can do wine tastings and different cheese and charcuterie tastings as well. Anything else, Mama? That's all. Okay. Well, thank you guys for, for spending Mother's Day with us. Um, I love you. I love you too, Nina. <laughs> and we love you, and we can't wait to welcome you back into Forte. Cheers and enjoy the rest of, rest of your day.